Hey, Stalker. Tired from a long journey, I presume? Why not sit there and rest by the campfire? Share some stories. You have undoubtedly seen a lot in your adventures. Just before you arrived here, I was reminiscing of when all that stuff leaked out to the masses. Part of the reason we are here right now. Don't you agree? Hello slash x slash. I'm part of a certain organization, one with very particular interests and responsibilities. I have been given permission by my superiors to make some of our activities semi-public and answer questions. I will say up front that we do have some ulterior motives that I may or may not eventually reveal. I've been given strict guidelines on what I'm allowed to reveal, but I will answer as many questions as I can. Why did we pick for Chan of all places? For the same reason many of you use it, it's a good first filter. I know many of you will dismiss this as yet another roleplay thread. I bear no ill will towards you if you do. Truth is that I don't bear some kind of world-saving knowledge, I'm not here to tell you how to save your soul nor to warn you about an impending apocalypse. I do, however, have knowledge about a lot of mysterious phenomena. Creatures, organizations, people, practices and events. From disappearances to sightings, from what is thought to be a myth to what is suspected to be a fact, from the material to the ethereal. About my organization. We are an international group dedicated to investigate the stuff that your authorities aren't comfortable telling you about. Some would simplify it and call it, the occult. And while it is accurate, let me tell you that this covers a wider range than just reading through grimoires. Sometimes we're required to perform seemingly innocent investigations under the guise of ecological surveys, sometimes we're required to do much dirtier stuff, there's a reason why we're required to take psychological therapy and mandatory vacations after every gig. We've worked with multiple governments across the world, sometimes even against them, hell, there's been cases in which we have to work against the people we just helped the previous year. About my role. I'm part of the investigation task force. No, I'm not some kind of badass gun-totting marine, although I did receive basic firearms training upon joining and, depending on the task, may be issued equipment of the sort. My responsibilities are varied and range from scouting locations, investigating archaeological sites, documenting the encountered phenomena, contacting the required parties for a job, acquiring resources and, in very rare occasions, help in neutralizing potential threats. As mentioned before, I will do everything in my power to answer every single one of your questions honestly. But please don't hold it against me if at some point I'm forced to obfuscate information or be vague due to the guidelines I've been provided. How were you recruited and what's an example of an activity you were a part of? Then I had a series of interviews with different people. Some were through the phone, others in person. The whole process took about six months. That said I'm pretty sure not all members are recruited this way. Each recruiter does things differently and I know at least one of my co-workers got scouted via internet forums. Unofficial, Archaeology Basically, archaeological zones are scouted before the public, aka archaeologists, are allowed to proclaim they've discovered it. This is in order to make sure there are no threats to the safety of the people, or information that may be deemed too damaging if made public. This is probably what I've done the most. Other examples include, helping neutralize a threat, investigate objects and modern locations, sabotage other organizations and acquire information or items. It's hard for me to pick one, in my short time I've seen stuff that still requires me to get a hold of myself. The one time I threw up at the sight of something was, ironically, a man-made creature. We were investigating an abandoned research facility that was shut down during the 60s and just recently rediscovered. Our task was to go in, clean up the place, and get out. The place was disguised as a hospital for low-income families, so it already had a disgusting vibe to it. We found documents detailing different forms of human experimentation and even organ trafficking. After making our way down to the underground part of the facility, we started hearing muffled cries and moans. Upon entering the laboratory area, we were met with the horrid smell of rotting carcass. We immediately noticed the slimy wet floor, 
and with each step the smell got worse. The cleanup crew found delivery chairs with human skeletons, all of them with a bullet wound in the middle of the skull. The most notorious thing is that, despite the fact they were entirely decomposed, they were just as slimy as the floor. As I proceeded to take a slime sample, we could hear something moving in the darkness. The crew aimed their torches at the source of the sound and I could clearly hear one of them gasp. I turned around and upon seeing those things. I just threw up. I couldn't hold it. I can only describe them as overgrown fetuses with completely gray skin and macrocephalia. About the size of an adult pig. A total of three of them, but later we found two more that had already died. They were blind and seemingly used smell and sound for orientation, which made them crawl straight toward me after I emptied my stomach. The crew was ordered to open fire, instantly killing two of the things. The third one did not pursue me, but instead began licking my vomit. Upon examination the fetuses were covered in the same slime as the rest of the room. What do you know about psychic stuff? Like that guy thing that names itself Nyarlathotepon. X years ago, and did telepathic stuff to me before it went absolutely insane, psychic YouTubers, and all groups, and why they try to groom others into becoming YouTubers before they explain the stuff, the dreamlands, and stuff like that, and perhaps something about me, since I got dragged down pretty deep into this stuff but refused to let myself get groomed or affected by them. Fair amount of research has been done on the topic of psychic capabilities. Most people can achieve basic skills like remote viewing and precognition with the right training. Telepathy is a bit more complicated because it requires people to be attuned, which is why is common among twins or mothers and their babies. The YouTubers are probably trying to grow their circle of influence. The cynic in me thinks they're just grifting in order to get money, sort of like multi-level marketing. Another explanation could be that they're trying to influence the collective into thinking they do have powers, thus granting them said power. They're not in our radar so most likely not dangerous at all. The dreamlands are one of the many planes of existence, and one of the most fascinating ones both in the stuff you can find and how the plane itself behaves, since despite being far removed from our reality it's the easiest one to access. 1. Is Agatha true? Just a deviation of reptilian cities, too. Why did the Sumerians have that much knowledge? Where did they come from? 3. Why is Antarctica so important? Maybe because they're objects from the past, when it wasn't a pole. 1. Is Agartha true? Just a deviation of reptilian cities? Sort of true. We found at least two subterranean ruins that fit the description of Agartha. One in Europe and one in Asia. The concerning thing is that their demise happened fairly recently. 2. Why did the Sumerians have that much knowledge? Where did they come from? Humans just like you and me. It's just that they had the correct guidance. 3. Why is Antarctica so important? Maybe because they're objects from the past when it wasn't a pole? There's a lot of stuff down there. And I mean a lot. Undiscovered fauna and flora, archaeological sites, abandoned research facilities from World War II. I've been begging them to send me there for years. However, due to current geopolitical developments the higher-ups have decided to not mess with it at the moment. You guys done any exploration under the ocean like those pyramids they found on the ocean floor in Florida not so long ago? Any aqua expeditions that have yielded any interesting results also? What do you know about mermaids also, striders in Antarctica, or any cryptids from that region? You guys done any exploration under the ocean? Yes but I haven't taken part in it, other than monitoring cameras for like a week while a colleague was on vacation. I didn't see anything, except a few crabs and fish. Like those pyramids they found on the ocean floor in Florida not so long ago. Any aqua expeditions that have yielded any interesting results? Those pyramids were discovered during the 40s and only recently we finished mapping them. The crews found nothing, at least nothing alive. Also, what do you know about mermaids? Also, striders in Antarctica, or any cryptids from that region? Mermaid is yet another enormously broad term. Some are spirits, similar to the Fae. 
Others are cryptids, like the Neen Gen. I've listened to conversations with mermaids recorded back in the 80s, part of my initial training also involved a video of a group of Japan's fishermen getting wrecked by a Neen Gen. As for Antarctica's cryptids, let's just say that Lovecraft wasn't far off about albino penguins. I've also seen specimens of giant crabs, about the size of a small car, and an amphibian that converged into an anglerfish-like body, enormous jaw and bioluminescent lure. What entities have you seen summoned demon-like things or other weirdness? Do they reside in another plane or dimension? Do they physically appear here? Also, what do you know about Bigfoot? What entities have you seen summoned? Demon-like things or other weirdness? I've seen people manifest demons, mostly of the lesser kind, call upon the souls of the departed, the fair folk, muses, and even an angel once. The thing is that, demon, is such a wide term nowadays that a lot of things could count as a, demon, in people's eyes. My classification is a bit more strict, so I guess some of those lesser demons are closer to mere monsters from other planes of existence. Do they reside in another plane or dimension? For the most part yes. Do they physically appear here? It's possible, but for the most part it won't happen. They will often need a physical conduit, like a body or an object. In some cases they can, half manifest, allowing you to see them but not touch them or manipulating stuff around you, i.e. suddenly starts raining, fire moves in unnatural ways, etc. Also, what do you know about Bigfoot? The biggest and most regretful mistake of mankind. Please don't look for them. Are you affiliated with the aviary? Noah, what exactly are the things broadly referred to as fairies or the fae? For the most part, they're different kinds of nature spirits that often bridge different planes of existence. They're some of the few that can willingly assume corporeal forms, but our world has become quite noxious to them. Is there any truth to the underground giants, which were a popular point of discussion here recently? Yes. These vaguely human beings which were said to live beneath Switzerland, China, and parts of the USA, would point to a rich and horrifying subterranean world where, if true, I would wager many so-called cryptids are simply vagrant specimens from this great unseen biome. You're almost on point here. Any thoughts on the increasing amount of posters lately on this board who are claiming to be aliens? No personal thoughts but I know for a fact that there's people out there with extraterrestrial DNA. What exactly is going on with this talk of the Galactic Federation? I honestly don't know anything about a Galactic Federation. From what I've been told, it's an exaggeration if not a myth. 34838286 Considering that something as simple as language is an occult conduit, there's no way to be completely safe. But I usually tell people they have two options, either get away from it and live in blissful ignorance, thinking their inevitable end can only come from natural sources or dive deep into it and become a magician capable of self-defense. Thanks for the answers, expanding more on the underground giants. This seems like the gateway to many other related topics of mystery, since it seems as though the ones there underground have been around for an incomprehensibly long period of time and survived multiple turns of the cyclical rise and fall of mankind's civilization. Do the giants have a cultivated, intelligent elite class which is far less bestial and feral than the literal unwashed masses of other giants nakedly living in their own excrement and devouring each other? Some sort of cadre of hyper-intelligent beings that operate from the shadows and is a real player in world events while the ordinary giants are left in their horrible life. Conditions for whatever reason, just like how in our society. Most people are plebs who do nothing but furnish gris for the mill of the system that enables the pitiful parasite elite cabal types to sit in their ivory towers lording over the world, as above, so below as they say. I cannot imagine that such a possible class of giant nobility would be anything besides ontologically evil in all respects given the circumstances which seem to be true. They may have survived, but their civilization for the most part has not. Current scans and drone footage indicate their civilization is similar to one of the Bronze Age. And from what I understand, there are intelligent giants. Some have even learned our languages. Wouldn't call them hyper-intelligent at all, they are estimated to have relatively high IQs but not genius level. 
they are however much more attuned to the earth. We don't have evidence of a cabal or anything like that. They seem very decentralized. They're organized in tribes, some of them have built impressive stuff down there. But like I said, they're very decentralized and their leaders, while at times hedonistic, are very involved with their communities and have religious responsibilities. I cannot imagine that such a possible class of giant nobility would be anything besides ontologically evil in all respects given the circumstances which seem to be true. Is a rat evil for feeding on its offspring and rallying its own to strike back at the cat? Can't believe in the first one in the thread to ask about skinwalkers. Dish. Occult archaeology bro. What are they? Do they exist? You ever encountered one? They do exist but most are a bit different from the Navajo accounts. They painted them with a broad brush, while the Mesoamericans were a lot more sensible about them. They are pretty much what the legends say. Sorcerers with the ability to turn into an animal. Current research suggests this is one of the oldest surviving magical traditions, and that it appeared during the early Neolithic. The more spooky skinwalkers are closer to the Navajo accounts, but not necessarily evil by choice. There's a phenomena I like to call mind-body disassociation disorder, which ultimately drives the afflicted mad, unable to properly merge their animal and human sides. Thus they become something in between, a wolf with elongated limbs and fingers, an elk with human face, stuff like that. Usually they have very little control over their magic and are very dangerous because of it. Recently we were tasked with hunting down one that crossed the US border into Mexican territory, leaving a trail of murder-rape cases that had to be reported as cartel killings. We received help from a Nawal, another shape-shifting mage. Also, any info on Lush, or Gurdjieff's idea all our lives are fodder slash nourishment for the moon? I guess if you don't take it literally. The planets are temples of the gods, so in a way we nourish them and they nourish us. I posted above, and you've replied. Many thanks. It appears to me, I may very well be wrong, because how could I possibly know about you, that we are talking about the same game, but are on opposing teams? I try to follow the light, as naive as that seems, is my guess somewhat accurate? If you are, who you say you are, then are we not, in fact, interacting with a glowy, as these boards call it? I do not mean any offense, you wouldn't be classified as the typical grunt, but your self-description of your organization and yourself, fits the profile. Again, not trying to offend. Withholding information, it's been said that freely giving info, is indicative of the light, and withholding or obfuscating info is of the dark. Would you agree? I have plenty more questions, but I'm currently busy at the moment, I hope you stay for a bit, and allow more convo. Thanks again. I'm neglecting writing my report on the cartel gig so I'm gonna stick around. Your guess is somewhat accurate, I think. But I'd describe it as the game having multiple teams playing instead of just two. My organization is a bit too international to be considered part of the Glowies, and more than once we've come into conflict with them. Not big enough to stop collaborating when needed. Just as the light reveals it can also cast illusions. Just as the darkness conceals, it can also allow you to perceive what your eyes won't let you. Yin and Yang, my friend, providence is the guidance of a higher power, and sometimes it's a nudge in the right direction, sometimes it's a push, and sometimes it's a hard shove. Sometimes you do it, and sometimes it's done to you. It's something that isn't noticed for a long time, sometimes over decades, but it's there in retrospect. You may have a series of small events that don't seem to be much and they seem like they're your choices at these times. However, that guiding hand is leading you to a series of conclusions that you couldn't foresee based on your decisions and actions in past events. Yes, it can be divine guidance depending on who you think is divine. And no, it's not a series of coincidences, it's not planned, it's synergy, and sometimes, dare I say it, destiny. Someone wanted a conclusion, it was a good conclusion, and she manipulated events in someone's life to get it, and she wasn't human. It can take decades, and the manipulations are done with your and others' consent. It's just that you haven't experienced the conclusions yet. 
The things that you see and do often have a purpose that you can't imagine and pop up back in your life when they're least expected, and as it turns out you're the only one who has the right experiences, is in the right place, and is in the right time to do it, but there's a sticking point, and the person you need to complete it has also done something, right? Some people concentrate on only what the major players are up to, but the bit players may turn out to be the most important of all, C-L-O-T-R. That sounds like a LARP. Life is a LARP, so play your role in it seriously, but leave out time for fun and pleasure. Some say that everything must always be serious all of the time. They have a terminal case of gray face disease. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players, they have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. William Shakespeare, as you like it, 